Hello, my friend. Glad to see you made it here today because we have gathered in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. He's alive and he lives. I make a lot of these videos, three a week, in case you're wondering. So if you miss today's video, there'll be one Maybe tomorrow or the next day. It's always something new to talk about. And although there's many different subjects, the message is always the same. I can tell you from this avenue or that avenue or whatever, this direction or that direction, but the message is always the same. And the message is the Messiah, Jesus Christ, coming into your life, coming into this world, is good news. It is good news. And what is the good news of God's kingdom? That everyone who comes to it, who receives it, is blessed. That's the good news. And everyone who came to Jesus Christ was blessed. They were healed. They were cured. They were risen back to life. They were blessed. That's the good news. There was a time when John, the messenger of God, God's chosen messenger to go out in front of him, before him, as a bright, shining light in <laughs> bringing people to Jesus, baptizing them in the name of the Messiah, in the name of things to come, and the things that were to come was good news. John clearly said, don't believe in me. Instead, believe in the one who comes after me. Put your faith in that one, because he will baptize you by the power of the Holy Spirit and with fire. Fire to those who hate him, but the Holy Spirit to those who love him. Put your faith in him. John never saw miracles. How many of us in our world have never seen or experienced a miracle? And does that mean we're not blessed? Doesn't mean that. In fact, every word John said about Jesus Christ was the truth. Here John, preaching good news, preaching love, preaching the, the, the gospel of Jesus Christ to, to a world that desperately needed it. And yet he himself never experienced miracles, never performed a miracle. In fact, was imprisoned. Didn't see the luxury of life. Many people want us to believe that the blessing of God is seen and felt and distributed through the luxury of life. That this isn't true. When the luxuries of life wear out, when the worries of money and financial gain and financial stability seem to be as liquid as water, we could lose faith. And many people do lose faith. 
because they've put in their faith in the luxuries of life instead of the substance of Jesus Christ. John one time sends his own followers, his own disciples to Jesus. Are you the one we're here to hope for? Are we the one we should be putting our faith in or, or should we start looking for another as John is sitting in prison about to be beheaded? And Jesus, healing everyone who came to him, everyone who touched Jesus was healed. Everyone whom Jesus laid his hands upon was healed. From the blind to the crippled to the lepers, he even was raising dead men back to life. Sister John, tell John what you have seen and what you have heard. Jesus bringing the good news of the kingdom, manifesting the good news of the kingdom in a world that desperately needed it. To the poor, to the oppressed, to the broken, to the downtrodden. How good is that? That's the good news. Tell John everything you have seen. And let no man be offended because of what I'm doing. Don't be offended that I'm healing all these unbelievers while you, the believer, reap no benefit from it. I want to read to you a little bit. Got some scriptures. Part of that good news. Let's go all the way back to the Old Testament in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 3. It's very good. It's a nice read. I think I can see the words better without the glasses, guys. Chapter 3 says, Son, do not forget my teachings, but let your heart Keep my commandments. For length of days and years of life and peace, they will add to you. Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Never let go of these things. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. So you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. It's kind of like John, in all his ways, I'm trying not to lean on my own understanding. I'm trying to trust in the Lord. And if you're the Lord, let me know so I may put my trust in you. John, everything you said about me is the truth. People are rising back to life. People are being healed. People are being received by God. Jesus says to the people, you know, there's not a greater man on earth that a woman could bear, could bore, could have raised than John the Baptist. He is the finest of all men. No sin in that man. Did you go out to see a man dressed in, in fine clothing? 
Did you go out to see a person inside of luxurious homes? The rich people have fine clothing and luxurious homes. Or did you go out to see a prophet? A man swayed in the wind, a reed being bent in the wind, or a prophet. And if you went to see a prophet, then believe in everything he said. Because that's sort of thing about a prophet. It's not that he is speaking about a future or, or some possibility or something like that. A prophet is speaking the word of God, even if the word of God is speaking of the future or something like that. It is whatever the word of God says, the prophet repeats. And the word of God says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. Jesus saying the same thing. Don't be offended by what I'm doing. You don't need a miracle in order to believe. You don't need to be healed in order to believe. You believe because you know God. Now trust in we want so desperately, so bad for this place to be where God's kingdom reigns. <laughs> Yet Jesus has always said from the beginning, I want to reign in this place, within your heart, right within the tablet of your heart, steadfast love, and faithfulness. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. What is evil? Not trusting in the Lord? What is evil? The destruction of God's holy temple? Turn away from the things that are hurting your temple, your body. Things we know are, are not good for us. And when we turn away from those things, we find health and refreshment to our bones. Turn away from unbelief. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine. My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline, or be weary of his reproof. For the Lord reproves him whom he loves. As a father, the son in whom he delights. Not everything that comes into our world or our life that's a, a disappointment is bad. Maybe sometimes it's good for us. You know? Because God loves us. Same as a, as a child and his father. You don't spank your son's butt just to, to, to beat him. But because he's been engaged in some sort of harmful activity. And in order to deter him from engaging in that harmful activity, you try to turn him away with some sort of 
negative reaction or action, like a butt whooping. <laughs> no child likes to be spanked. And no parent likes to spank their children. I remember I spanked my son one time. And, and, and in that, I decided I would never spank him again. I would never hit my son again. And he was a young boy, five, six years old. Made me so angry. And the things he was doing was choosing to do the things that were harmful for himself. I chose to never spank him again. He never did. Because hitting somebody is an act of violence, period. And, and you only engage in acts of violence when you're dealing with somebody you hate. That's why boxers hit each other. That's why people in war hit each other. It's an act of violence, and it's reserved for somebody you hate. And sometimes the greatest act of love we can show to our children comes through a hug. Comes from warm, gentle arms. Let me pick you up and pull you out of that situation instead of beat you down further into it. If I want to protect you from harm, why would I bring harm to you in order for you to understand that, that that's harmful? I think it broke my heart the day I spanked my son. It proved to me that there must be a better way. And that better way is to love, to be the example I wish you would follow. One of the things I think all children just naturally do. Everything you do. And they don't just do everything and everything you do. They, they do the things you, you do bad, right? I could be as good as, as I want to be good, and, and your child's never going to follow those good examples. You're always going to follow in the bad, right? If I smoke, my child smokes. If I drink, alcohol, my child drinks alcohol. Parents who do drugs have children who do drugs. Isn't, isn't that amazing? Now, parents who working in love, a yeah, child don't follow those, <laughs> those examples. Same with Jesus. Him <clears throat> being our father and the living example we should follow, and, and yet, because everything in him is good and there's no bad, we, I don't wanna follow that. <laughs> I don't wanna be a part of that. I want some good or bad. I don't wanna be bad. Right? We always hear about the woman who, well, I, I like good guys, but I want that bad boy. He turns me on, the bad guy. And then later reaps, unfortunately, what they saw. A bad person cannot produce good. And a good person will not produce bad. Sometimes we've got to learn. And we've got to learn it the hard way. Blessed is the one who finds wisdom and the one who gets understanding. For the gain from her is better than gain from silver and her profit better than gold. For she is more precious than jewels and nothing you desire 
can compare with her. Long life is in her right hand. In her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness. 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 <laughs> and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who lay hold of her. Those who hold her fast are called blessed. Now, let's go over here to Luke chapter 7. Keep in mind everything we just read, everything we've been talking about. What is wisdom? Wisdom is knowing the difference between right and wrong, right? And being wise is choosing the right over the wrong. One time, there's a group of people. Jesus is talking to them, large crowd. And Jesus is giving them his time. It's energy. I think that's one thing that breaks my heart in my life. I have no silver to give anyone. I have no gold to offer anyone. I have me. And when that's rejected, what's left? And that's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking when I offer you something more precious than silver and gold, and you don't want that. It's not good enough. It doesn't measure up. My time, my life, my experience, my disappointments, my tears, my heart, my soul. I don't want that stuff. And there's a time Jesus is entertaining a large crowd. And some of the people say, you know, your, your mother and your brothers are standing outside and they, and they want your attention. Jesus says, my mothers, my brothers are the ones who hear my word and obey them. And what is the word of God? He's not saying that his mother and his brothers standing outside are doing something wrong. <clears throat> He's saying everyone who comes to me is my mother, is my brother has chosen right. One of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him, and he went to the house, uh, the Pharisee's house to recline at the table, and behold, a woman of the city who was a sinner. And when she learned that he was reclining at the table, she got an alabaster box, came in to anoint the Lord, and probably surely saw the, the ill treatment they were showing him. And so standing behind the Lord, she began to weep and cry, washing his feet, with their tears, wiping them with their hair and anointing his feet with oil. Now Simon, the Pharisee, right? A, a, a person who is well versed in the word of God. Boy, if this man was a prophet, he would surely know this woman and that she was a sinner.
And that's the good news of the kingdom. Jesus came for the sinner. He came for the broken. He came for those who were without God. He says to the woman, your steadfast love and faithfulness have cared you. Cared me of what? Of sin. Of unbelief. Of evil. You are forgiven. Simon says, who is this man and now believes he can forgive sin? Who was this guy? Says Simon, I have a <coughs> question to ask you. <clears throat> One man owed a banker 50 bucks. Another man owed the banker $500. And when neither man could pay the debt, the banker said, I cancel your debts. Which of the two will love the banker more? And of course, the obvious answer is the one who is forgiven the greater debt. Well, you, you have some wisdom within you and, and you have rightly judged. But the one who has been forgiven little loves only a little. But the one who has been forgiven a lot loves a lot. Says to the woman, you are forgiven. Your love has saved you. Go and be at peace. There's many women who follow Jesus Christ. Even Mary called Magdalene. I forgot I was supposed to look up what does Magdalene mean. I'll get back to you on that. Must mean something. See many videos, movies, and every time you see Mary of called Magdalene, She's portrayed as a prostitute or, or some wicked thing like that. And the reality is there's no mention of her ever acting in such a way. Instead, it says she was possessed by seven demons and Jesus freed her from the power of that oppression. From those demons. There was many women who followed Jesus Christ in tended to the needs of Jesus Christ as he had needs. They all worked together as a great family, bringing the good news to us today. You know, there's many people who were blinded and when we're unable to receive the good news, because as soon as they heard the word of God, the devil would swoop in, blind them, and prevent them from being able to be saved. The devil. But Jesus, being generous, never limited where his word was going or to who his word was going to. Even if his word was being spread out to places of rocky soil, places where the weeds would grow up, or on the good soil. Places all along the path. You know, many of us beat each other up over 
our willingness to destroy our own temple through acts of smoking, acts of drinking, acts of drug abuse, or, or whatever abuse we may be subjecting ourselves to, but never recognizing or realizing that we, we participated, our sins participated in the destruction of Jesus Christ, the holiest of all temples man has ever known. And yet, Christ forgave us. And if Christ forgave us for that, how much more is he willing to forgive us for the things we're doing to ourselves? And that's the good news. The good news is everyone Everyone who came to Jesus Christ were blessed. And that's what God says. That's the word of God. That's what all the words of the prophets and Moses and all throughout the Bible say this. Put your faith and your trust in the Lord and you will be blessed. Love God with all of your heart, with all of your mind, with all of your body, with all of your strength, and you will be blessed. Just where we are today, as we see what seems to be the same plagues spoken of back there in the days of Pharaoh. And God was pulling Israelites out of Egypt and promising to deliver them into a foreign land, a land they had not known, but a place promised to them. All the plagues being rained out. Do not let your hearts be hardened. Do not lean upon your own understanding. But instead, in, in the midst of all of it, you know, that's the thing, is, is during this time in the Bible, during that time, the Roman Empire is getting ready to crush the Jewish nation. And yet, while the world sat in darkness, this woman decided to love, decided to seek out love. found love reclining at the table inside of a Pharisee's house, being mocked, not being respected, being rejected. And the value in love is what blessed her. That's wisdom. That's, that's wrapping steadfast love around your neck and faithfulness. Whether she knew Jesus was the Messiah or she didn't know, what she knew was God's word. Love others in the same way you wished to be loved. It's amazing, I preach love. My message is love. Because that's the message I was given. Tell you how much Jesus Christ loves you. That's why I always talk about sin and how rotten and nasty the human being is. 
and how the human being doesn't love God. Because I didn't come to tell you about how much I love God or how much the human being loves God. I came to tell you about how much Jesus Christ loves you. In spite of it all, He loves you. In spite of it all, He loves you. He knows exactly who you are, where you've been, and where you're going. And still He loves you. That's the good news. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. I hope you understand that. A guy who hasn't any friends I have a mother and a father who love me. I have a son who loves me. But friends, lived here seven months in this new place, this beautiful place made to worship God. And in the seven months, after living in a one spot for 48 years, not one person has called and said, How you doing, David? I miss you. Because I don't have any friends. And that includes all the way up until today. There ain't nobody loving me. I have one wife. And that wife told me, I don't love you. And I'm not in love with you. Heart sank. I can remember the day. I still remember the day. One of the most profound days of my life. And the person you love says to you, I don't love you. And I'm not in love with you. It's devastating. Because I know what that is. I am sure God our Father is devastated in the same way. When anyone says to him, I'm not in love with you. I don't love you anymore. It's so devastating. It manifests Jesus Christ being crucified all over again. That's what I see in the crucifixion. God being devastated. Devastated. That you wouldn't love him or accept him. Grieving God, who is devastated for one reason. He loved you, even when you wouldn't love him back. And who am I to 
preach love to anyone. But I don't know nothing about it. That's the good news.